Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios. It's football at four. Football at four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, and it is brought to you by Bet365 at Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. This hour of the show, it's brought to you by Taco Cat. Got a craving for tacos? Check out the Taco Cat at 8 South Essex Avenue in Margate. Visit them at Taco Cat South Jersey. Dot com. Adam Kaplan is in the house, the co-host of the Inside the Birds podcast, which you can find on any podcasting flat pat, platform or on their YouTube channel. Just search Inside the Birds, and he joins me now with a look at what was the most impressive thing about the Eagles' win last night. We can go all over the map on this one, but they never trailed in the game. They've won 10 out of their last 11. It seems that this team is a well-oiled machine, Adam, yet – People still have questions. <laughs> Mike, good to be with you. People still have questions, huh, after last night? I mean, the red zone offense could be better. I get that, but I'm kind of surprised to hear that. Yeah, a couple turnovers. People like the sure. pass game. People Now, it's funny. The reverse happens, Adam. For years, the Eagle fans, you got to run the ball. Right. Now they run it 40 <laughs> times, and they want you to throw. It's funny. It, it is funny. I, I didn't know that. No, it, looking at our, our YouTube commenters, Commenters, they're pretty happy. Yeah, but very, very few complaints. Now, I think the legit one is the Red Zone offense, which was one for five last night, was disappointing. Hertz was really, Hertz wasn't sharp. Now, we know he said after the game he wasn't feeling well. Apparently, the flu like symptoms went through the team. Uh, Kelsey and some other players were not feeling great. So, look, the bottom line is they dominated. They're certainly of the three wins, they are 3 and 0, one of only two teams in the NFC to be 3 and 0. Um, this is the most dominating one. And in the cleanest game of, yes, they had the two turnovers, but, Mike, special teams are pretty special. Britton Covey was terrific. Uh, the, the kicker, Jake Elliott, he's a new holder. That that worked out very well. The punter punted once and got inside the 20. I mean, Mike, this is what you're looking for. From your, We'll get into the rest of the stuff, but the, the, that's pretty good overall. Yeah, uh, obviously they had a great night on the ground, but – Tell me a little bit about the coach's game plan in that game last night and what stood out about that. Yeah, we had said on our pregame show, myself, Mosher, Greg Cosell, and Jason Avant, that because they're not playing Brian Flores against uh, that Brian Flores coach defense, which is he's running his version of Belichick's defense, and of course Belichick, <laughs> the original in week one, you're gonna, you're gonna, they're going to face a more traditional 34 front, and they did. I mean, certainly a lot of pressure. They're going to they're gonna bring it. Uh, the Eagles were they, were they were prepared, Mike. In fact, I would I would argue that the extra four days of preparation really helped these coaches. It sure showed it that they boy they they did a great job after the feeling out period of the first quarter that the Eagles started to dominate. Uh, the, you mentioned the running game, the ski, the run scheme was great. The offensive line was unbelievable. But really, you're talking about one of the two or three top run defenses of the National Football League, and they ran all over them. Uh, the, again, the the pass pro was excellent. So I, I like the offensive game plan. They, they mixed it up really well. They took whatever the Bucks gave them, and, and, and they really imposed their own will. And defensively, they were, they were really disciplined after giving up too many touchdown passes. Now, the, the interesting thing, Mike, in this game was they got up big once again but did not give up the big plays, the explosives, as coaches call them. And uh, I think they got to feel pretty good about that. Yeah, I know um, You know the game plan, as you, you get more comfortable as you do it, more Brian Johnson last night. I had somebody text in earlier asking if Sirianni called some plays. Was there a moment in the game where Sirianni took over the play calling? Did you notice that? No, I don't, I don't know. What, is, that, is that out anywhere? I have heard from – this is the, the, a listener texted it in, and I have heard some people – uh, kind of wonder if he took over some of the play calling in the game. I, I don't know if it was definitive or if it was brought up, but it's, I did have multiple people ask me that, and I didn't know if you had heard something. No, I hadn't heard that. I mean, now here's what happened. So I did notice that the camera pan on Brian Johns, it didn't look like he was really doing anything other than he had the headset on. I didn't think anything of it because that, that could happen because when the play is in – you know, you might put your, your, your card down, your, your play sheet down. So I don't know. I mean, maybe that's where that came from. I'm not sure. You'd have to ask the people who texted you in. But, no, it, the, their offense was terrific. It really was. Now, 25 points, I'd said on our postgame show last night with me, Mosher, and Clay Harbor that I thought they left points on the board. You know, Hertz talks about meat on the bone. Yeah, they, they, 
they definitely should have scored 40 or more. Uh, hmm. 25 is not bad, particularly against a good defense. But let's not forget the Bucks were they were down their best corner in Carlton Davis. The number two corner, Jamel Dean, left the game, could not return. So they're they're playing with backup corners. Uh, Vita Vea was not healthy for the game. He, he he didn't play his usual amount of snaps. He clearly was not himself, and the Eagles took advantage of it. So, yeah, look, 25 points is not bad. You'll, you'll take it any day of the week. And the, the other thing is, Mike, their defense was so dominating, and it's what we thought would happen. We thought this makeshift offensive line that's got five new starters this season for the Bucks in terms of new positions and new players, we thought the Eagles' defensive line would handle them, and they sure did. All right, Adam Kaplan, let's talk about the run game. It dominated 40 carries. They've run the ball 88 times in the last two weeks. I mean, right now, DeAndre Swift, he's second in the league with 308 yards rushing. The only guy more, Christian McCaffrey. He leads the NFL in first downs rushing. First down rushing percentage, yards per carry, 6.8. He's produced 100 rushing yards in consecutive games. So, what's going on with this running game? Why so dominant? Yeah, so we, we begged the Eagles to play Swift a lot last week. Now, this is – we didn't know that Ga- that Gainwell uh, would not you know, would get hurt with that ribs injury, but it shouldn't have taken that. They made an egregious error not playing him a lot in week one. That, that just was a mistake. And, well, they got forced to correct it because they had to, because Gainwell got hurt. And i got to tell you, I, this is another part that I love about this, this coaching plan. So what we had said on our pregame show last night, was that what they need to do is if they get a lead in the fourth quarter, pull Swift. We knew we knew Swift was going to be the guy um, from what we had heard. It's just a matter of how they'd rotate players. Don't let them play. If, they, if they're up by two touchdowns or more, and they, they, they were, pull them out of the game and let Gainwell grind carries. It's exactly what they did. Really good job of coaching. I don't care about the run per carry, the average per carry for Gainwell. It's irrelevant. He's there to grind carries, to, to, to run the clock out, and he sure did. And you just see that now, you really see, Mike, why Swift has to be the guy from the onset of a game. He's shot out of a cannon. I mean, he's just so explosive. He sets up his blocks really well. He knows where to go. Second-level runner. Great vision. Great finisher. I'm just blown away. 305 yards in the last two last two games. In fact, as you know, again, he barely played in Week 1 for some stupid reason. He didn't play it uh, really at all in Week 1. That was a mistake. But you got to give the coaches credit. The scheme is, The run scheme is great. The offensive line, Mike, has just been incredible the last two weeks. Their pass pro improved in this week, and quite frankly, against a better pass rush. I was very impressed with their offensive line. No breakdowns. Hurts had a lot of time to, to throw, not just on the, the, the pass to Alamide Sakias for the touchdown, which was a great throw, though it was a little great, so it was a little tip, still got there. Just overall, they gave him great pass protection. and, and not they, Again, the only negative is too many field goals in the red zone offense needs to improve. Yeah, so obviously it looks like Swift has become the guy there because last yep. night there was a split, though. I mean, it was 16 carries for Swift, 14 for Gainwell, but the production, way different. Well, Mike, it's very clear. Swift is their, is their, new, is their main back, and he gets things going. And then what they do is it was really a two-to-one it was really a two-to-one split snap it, 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 until the game became a blowout in the fourth quarter. It was, all, it was mostly swift, and then you saw they pulled him, which is the smartest thing. And poor Rashad Penny, you saw he had his helmet on. You could tell he wasn't happy. I mean, it, if you read the body language, who would be? He just didn't get a chance to play. I mean, and this is what we'd said in the pregame show. you are probably only play unless someone got hurt, and he didn't play. So yeah, he, he got a DMP. He was, he was active but did not play, and – what, now, do what, do you what, what, do you, what do you keep a guy like yeah. that for on your 53 if you're not going to play him? No, but here's the thing. Boston Scott's hurt. Boston Scott made the trip, but he didn't, he didn't play. He was not cleared fully. So does this mean, but, Penny, you think days are numbered? No, no, no. Well, Scott's definitely a three. The question is, because they can do this, they could just cut him, and then if he wants to go to the practice squad, they can do that. But Penny's got to ask him this question. He's got to ask himself this question. Do you want to have a chance to win the Super Bowl? Or do you want to play somewhere else where you don't have a chance to be a, win a Super Bowl? He just has to make that call. And by the way, that could happen. You know, he, he doesn't have a role. Once Scott comes back, he's the fourth back, and he probably would not be active, Mike. We we saw this week one. Yeah. And that that's just the bottom line. Look, they're in a great situation. You know, for the people who said this, and I, I wasn't sure if I agree with it, but I think I think these I think the, these thoughts from in social media from Eagles fans were I think it's going to be correct. They have a chance to be better than than Sanders collectively between Swift and Gainwell and Scott if the coaches figure it out. Well, they sure as heck figured it out in this past game, Mike. The rotation was fantastic. I, 
I have very little to complain about, Mike, to be honest with you. Just better execution from Hurts in the red zone. I have no problem. This is a really well-coached game. All right, Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds podcast, joining me here, Football at Four. Uh, you mentioned the red zone, one for five. They could have had, uh, you know, I think Brown had a couple drops in the end zone. The passing game could have taken off a little more. Brown had a couple drops, but he did have 131 yards. So, And I thought the Hurts, uh, you, you mentioned inconsistent, I agree, but he ripped one to Zacchaeus in there. I thought that was the throw of the night. Yeah, and that throw, you could see it. Jamel Dean gets his fingertips on if you slow it down. Yep. But he, he drove the football, and this is, this is a coaching term. He looked down, he looked down the, the gun barrel. What does that mean? I learned this from Ron Jaworski, actually, and then I've heard other coaches say, you, as a quarterback, you've got to stand there and take the, take the heat. You've got, you got to take the defender coming right at you. And he sure did. You saw he got drilled. And, he, and he, he drove it off his back foot, and he drove that football. That was a great throw. I loved it. I know he. I know people want him to roll out more. I get that's a, it's a fair point for the coaches, but he throws very well from the pocket, which he didn't do in twenty one. Mike, one of the many areas where he's improved, and he drove that football. And it's good to see Sakias. And by the way, that was a comeback throw. That was a scramble drill throw. That was a that was a good job by Sakias to come back to it, who filled in for Quest Watkins, who did not even practice last week with a hamstring problem. All right, defense, because uh, I think the defense is a, con- uh, a a very interesting conversation. I don't know that any one guy jumped off the page. This was a collective effort from all over the place. Well, Jalen Carter, it's funny. You see him get that half a sack, whatever they want to credit him for, but he stands for- – he kind of looked at um, – well, actually, no, on this, it might have been on the – well, when he stripped it, okay, that was an incredible play against Rashad White. One of those two plays, Mike, he, he kind of stood over him, looked at him. Because, you know, he got knocked for being a bully at Georgia. Like, he, he would do some stuff in practice, and his teammates didn't like it. This is just the way that he is. He's an intimidator. He's an incredible football player. He's just scratching the surface, Mike. This is a special talent. The most talented player for this past draft. We know why he dropped. But the Eagles are looking smart. To the, and, again, everything we've heard so far, he's doing everything right off the field. And, He's doing a heck of a job on the field, Mike, and and, and, and Jordan Davis' his teammate at Georgia's look good. Mel Williams adding some really good snaps. Greg Cosell, from our, our, one of our pregame analysts, loves him. He said he's not getting enough credit how great he's been, or really good he's been, excuse me. And, look, they're, they're, they're probably going to – they're only going to probably get maybe on the season, Mike, 40 or so sacks. I don't, really, I don't even know if they'll get 50, but I don't think it matters. They still get pressure. The run defense is the best of the National Football League. It's just a different way because the, the scheme is different. It's Sean Asai is running his version of Vic Fangio's defense, but it's certainly different from the way that Jonathan Gannett ran it. Yes, uh, there's a lot of interesting things there. The run defense has been now. Let me ask you. Tampa doesn't run a whole heck of a lot. Um, they don't run it well at all. Yeah, no, no, Minnesota, same thing. Yep, so yep. is the run defense that good, or are these teams not willing to try it? Well, Mike, here's the thing, though. They did a good job on Ramondre Stevenson, who's one of the best young backs in the league, so that, that one counts. They're going to face Brian Robinson, who's a power back, who's performed very well this season. The next, now you got the Jets duo, though it didn't do well last week, of Bryce Hall and, excuse me, Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook, but then you see what the Dolphins backs did last game against Denver, who, set, who really set a team record for rushing and rushing touchdowns in a game. So that, that'll be fun. And then Brian Robinson again and uh, Tony Pollard in, in week nine. So, look, they're going to be tested. But it's just here's the thing, because Hargrave, yes, he's a better pass rusher than any of their interior uh, defensive tackles, Mike, but, but he, he, he just did not try against the run. He didn't play hard against the run. These guys do. They bring incredible energy and passion to penetrate and get to the quarterback, and they play the run on the way of the quarterback, unlike Hargrave did. Uh, we're breaking it down. By the way, I saw an interesting stat about Carter and Hargrave. Hargrave is the most defensive tackle pressures in the league. Carter's number two, but the snap differential there is almost a third more for Hargrave than it was for Hargrave has played 127 snaps, Carter only 89, and Carter has 15 pressures and Hargrave 18. So that tells you the kind of production and disruption Carter has been uh, in terms of that. He's just incredible. And I, you know, the one knock on him was at his pro day, he was around 10 pounds overweight. He didn't have a good pro day. We know about the off the field problem. So, 
it was fair to question, as a lot of people in the league did. Why would the Eagles feel differently than every other team? Yeah. Because so many teams had him off their board, Mike. That's the, the untold story here. That's a true story, which which I knew about before the draft. Well, and Adam, I think that so, uh, the, the fact that the Eagles have this core group, the Grams, the Fletchers, the Kelseys, mm-hmm. the Lanes, that does make you feel more at ease that you can have a guy fit in. And not to mention, he had a bunch of classmates from the same school. That helps. And what we, what we had said after, the dra- after they made the pick was that they had the infrastructure to help him. As you just said, that the veteran players, great locker room. If he needs to say, I know they have a, they have a every team is a team psychologist. They, they have that. Councils, uh, um, Paul Lancaster is the player programs guy. Apparently he's pretty good. So they've got it all, Mike. And, and look, it's, they, they did their homework. They knew what the issues were. And so far, so good. Now, this, this is a, this is a four to, you know, this is, it's a four year study for them, including the fifth year option. So far, so good. He's been incredible. He's only going to get better. The kid, I'll say this much. The kid really cares about football. Uh, and that's great, and he's coached well. But we'll we'll see. Look, this is he's only played three games in the National Football League. We all love what we're seeing. It's incredible. He's a phenomenal football player, but he's got a long career ahead of him. Adam linebackers, no Dean, but Morrow and Cunningham, yeah. and it hasn't been a problem. So I actually am interested to see what Morrow's role is when Dean's ready to return. And what they're doing is they're they're getting, well, Dean's definitely going to start. He'll get the job back with his, from a sprained foot. But he can't play for um, – he's eligible to come back in week five. We'll see, see what happens. But the situation here is that the defensive line cleans these guys off to, to, to fill well, and they did that. Uh, defensive backs, by the way, you know, they were much maligned coming into this game. They did an excellent job. Mike, Mike Evans had to earn everything he got. You've got to give him credit. And here's an incredible stat. Tampa Bay, despite being down and having to throw a lot, only 12 first downs in the game. That just shows you how great their defense was. Uh, I want to get your thoughts, too, on the defensive backs there because Blankenship, I thought, had a big game, and I really like the way that Sean Desai is using him. And then the move to put Bradbury in the slot. Is this a long-term thing, Adam, or was this based on the matchup? It's week to week. They're going to evaluate what the tape looks like, how comfortable Bradbury was. Um, you know, it's always about getting your best 11 people on each side of the football on the field, and uh, that's why – that's why Mario Goodrich did not play. Uh, they they just didn't think it would work as their main slot. He he took all the most of the slot reps last week after Maddox got hurt. He didn't play well enough. And uh, they'll look, it, it's a it's a performance league. Josh Job is Josh Job's not a slot corner, so he he's better on the outside. And this is all they could do. Now they'll they'll look at this. They'll, they're going to work out veteran corners uh, going forward. You know, occasionally, and they'll they'll see if there are any good slot corners out there. I can't imagine that they don't sign a veteran later on, you know, somewhere, of course, of the next couple weeks in particular. They need to at least get a veteran on the practice squad let the guy go through it. But right now it worked. And now they're on a short week here. i got to do one thing, for, and we're going to go in a minute here. But Friday, Mike, will preview the Washington game. They're a really loaded wide receiver. That will not be easy. And Sam Howell doesn't turn the ball over and get sacked like he did this last game. All right, uh, before we roll, I want to get to your opinion. You did mention Elliott, great as usual, hit three field goals. But, hello, Britton Covey, hello, welcome aboard. we got a punt return in the game. Well, to be honest with you, he's been really good. I mean, look, look, he, he was, Covey was much improved last late last season when they actually blocked for him. And the funny thing was, boy, did I turn out to be wrong. The, the long punt return, because it, it was an absolute bomb by Camardo, the, the punter for um, the Bucks is one of the best punters in the league. And I'm like, oh, dude, just, 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 just let it go in the end zone. Well, he didn't. And what an over 50 yards in this. He had two good returns, that one and one other return. By the way, he's looked fine so far. He, he, he's a good player. He's done a good job, and uh, kudos to him. And, look, the, the operation on the, on the field goals are good. That was, uh, we were told in practice, it actually looked good last week, so this is great. And, look, everything's going well for this football team right now. The only thing is injuries. They've got a couple injuries. We don't know much about it. The Dickersons didn't look to be bad at all. It's the one with Evans, Mike. It's never good when a player with a neck injury is not clear to return. That that would worry me a little bit. All right, Adam Kaplan from uh, the Inside the Birds podcast, which you can find on any podcasting platform or on their YouTube channel. Just search Inside the Birds and a lot of material, I'm sure, getting guys, uh, all the fans out there ready for Eagles and Commanders because they're right back at it now on Sunday. Monday night or right back into the flow. Sounds good, Mike. We'll talk Friday. Thank you. All right. Adam's back on Friday here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. And, of course, don't forget, download the free mobile app.